Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number four at Belmont at the Big A on Saturday. Let's take a look at the field for the grade three $175,000 run happy stakes. Some talented sprinters going three quarters of a mile. Mike, we'll see what we get from the one straight no chaser. It's been just about a year since we last saw him. And boy, was he good in that Maryland sprint. Was in really good form the last time we saw him. Then his last couple of efforts, super strong. He's got a lot of speed from the rail. The layoff is obviously a big concern, but if he comes back anything like he was as a four-year-old, it's going to be a handful for this field. He showed big speed Preakness afternoon 2023, the last time he raced. And we'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. And Straight No Chaser is expected to make the lead in a situation that favors front runners. And if he comes back close to what he was, that could be all she wrote for the rest of the field. Yeah, he comes back sharp and he makes a lead like this. Um, they're probably not going to be able to beat him. That would be a huge advantage for him. We'll see if anybody else can take the race to him early, Dan. It feels like the most likely candidates, the two who was really sharp uh, towards the end of last year in New York for Jacobson, but not so much lately. Now, Straight No Chaser was entered last week at Oaklawn against Skelly, drew the inside post. Connections didn't like the rail. They scratched to run here. They draw the rail again. Let's watch Straight No Chaser's last race. Again, you have to go all the way back to Preakness Day 2023. It's the Grade 3 Maryland Sprint. This on the heels of just an open lengths performance at Oaklawn, a breakthrough effort. And this race, he just went right to the front and dominated to the tune of a 107 buyer, and he beat three next out winners. Yeah, I mean, listen, he had all the best of it here. He was too fast for these horses early and you can see behind him everybody's chasing they're not getting any closer dan it's really sharp and this victory was really sharp prior to that two races in a row though with big figures where he didn't have stressful trips at all he just got sort of got control of the pace and never faced a challenge could that be the case here i guess we'll find out Durante, the number two, is a graded stakes winner over track and trip, having taken the bold ruler last fall during the Belmont at the Big A meet, and then he ran well over fast going in the fall high weight, wet track in the Graves, and they tried two turns with him at Oakland, just draw a line through that race. He's a speed horse and didn't break, and it's probably not his best distance, and draw a line through his last race. They ran him on turf a week ago. Interesting to see if he'll wheel back in a week. If he does, he can be part of the pace picture. He could. We'll see if he's going to be able to get back to that form he was in, again, late last year. This course was in razor sharp form here for Jacobson. It feels like he's tailed off a little. They've tried some different things with him recently and it hasn't really worked out. Um, he's back quickly off the elusive quality. It's, you know, you look up Jacobson and formulate it too, Dan. It's not like he's one of these guys who likes to go turf the dirt to sort of, you know, uh, pick horses up. He has bad numbers going turf the dirt. So I don't think that they were like prepping in that race last time to get him sharp for this. Stage left to number three would benefit if the one and the two hook up in a protracted speed duel. Here's his most recent race, the grade three Tom Fool, a race where he was wired by the sharp Super Chow, who came back to run third in the grade two Carter with a 94 buyer speed figure. Stage left has always been a solid horse. He kind of needs the right setup. Yeah, I, I just like this horse. I, I mean, he, he tries every time. He's got a race in him that would make him competitive against a field like this, but he doesn't have a lot of speed. And he is going to need somebody to go with the favorite early here to give him his best chance. The number four is 90% Maddie, and he did some good work around two turns last year. Talking to Butch Reed leading up to his most recent start, the Paige McKenney, he said he wanted to keep him focused this year on shorter distances. He liked his City of Laurel so much two starts back where he came close to the excellent post time. Here's his Paige McKenney, his seasonal debut going three quarters of a mile, and this is kind of 90% Maddie. He makes a big sweeping move into contention, but he's hanging on his left lead, and he's going to get run down late. This was a very fast-paced race, and he made a move into the teeth of it. It was a good effort. Yeah, he did run well in here. He, he takes over. He can't get away from these horses. You've already put out. He's on his wrong lead, and you can tell he's probably not going to make it to the wire, Dan. I'll give him some credit here, though, for digging in and holding second because it didn't it look, look like he might be off the board there in deep stretch. He was very game in there. Maybe he needed the race. That was seven. Now he gets to go six. I mean, there, there are ways to sort of dress this horse up a little. That effort, too, back to post time, he, he was awful good that day. 24 Mamba is the number five going out for trainer Charlie Baker. This is a horse with good tactical speed. Cutting back off a seven furlong effort, the Frank Whiteley at Laurel, where he underperformed. He just didn't really fire his best shot that day against a solid horse in Coastal Mission. I think they're going to be a little bit more patient with him this time. Take him back. I think you can see him working out a really good outside stalking trip, maybe with first run on the true closers. All right, we'll see. I mean, he's another horse who's got an awful lot to prove in races like this. They tried to try moving him up in class. He won those two starts, three and four back. He was pretty good in those races really good trips but he ran well they tried moving him up for his last two and it just felt like he wasn't quite up to that kind of competition this race is tougher than either of those 
The six Joey Freshwater had hinted at some ability last year as a three-year-old winning the grade three Bayshore going seven-eighths at Aqueduct. And it looks like Linda Rice has gotten this guy back to his best form. He's won two out of his last three starts, including this effort in a high-level allowance at Aqueduct in early April. We see him sweeping to the outside. He sort of sat perched off of a slow pace, and then he pours it on the last eighth of a mile. Here's a big buyer for this race, Michael. 105, that's great in class. Yeah, this is good stuff from this horse. I mean, he was super strong throughout the run of this race. If he can back it up and run that same race here, this uh, favorite better be uh, super tight off the layup because this horse was awful good in this race. He also did. I I know he was a grade three winner last year. His stakes placed a couple of times. I didn't really like him as a three-year-old. I didn't think he ran any really good races. He was excellent off the layoff this year in January. Excellent in that race last time. He's going good right now. And when he's not too aggressively ridden as he was two starts back, when he yes. can sit and stalk, I really believe that's the key. And I expect that sort of trip under Jose Lascano here. Let's take a look at our top selections for the run. Happy if straight no chaser runs back to what we saw last year, he's going to be real tough to beat, especially with the pace scenario. It seems like a good situation for this horse to come back in. I, I think he's supposed to be really tough in here. If he's close to ready, obviously the six is the main danger. If he can back up that allowance win last time. Same super for us, 1643 in the run happy on a really nice Saturday afternoon card. The Belmont at the Big A meet. Best of luck.